So this one's a slightly different model than yours, but very, very, very similar. And of course, ours hasn't been released yet, so I want to thank Hyundai Canada for allowing us to spend about a half an hour with this vehicle to go really in depth on this video. And that's what we do here. So if you're watching for this video, we are not just a review channel, we are a dealership group and we have this vehicle today as a pre-production version, but we will come back to this over and over and over again. If you are interested in the Santa Cruz, hit the subscribe button because we're gonna have every question answered that you could think of. If not in this video, then certainly in follow-up videos. And I respond to your questions and comments. So if you have questions and comments about it, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so here's how this works. Normally what we do is we do this every single day. We let our live audience build until the three minute mark. Uh, if you're not watching live with us, you can skip ahead. But in this case today, I am gonna give you some context on uh, when it's, uh, or what's going on with our video today. So really quickly, I just wanna allow our live audience to join and I'm gonna show you, if you wanna join us live every weekday at two o'clock, we do this here from our video bay. Uh, we're at the Brantford Kia Studios right now. And I just wanna show you how to join us live. If you go to our YouTube page, this is what it basically looks like. You're probably already on the page unless this is embedded somewhere. Hit the refresh page exactly at two o'clock, which is what we're doing right now. And you'll see our homepage is taken over by our live video. Gonna click into that. You're gonna have to watch a quick ad. In the meantime, I just wanna let you know who supports this channel, uh, just because uh, I hope that you support them as well. Uh, we are supported by Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, and Owen Sound Hyundai. So if you're interested in buying Kia or a Hyundai product and you're in Ontario, connect with us and we will connect you up. Uh, we can be your local dealer. We can deliver this car. We can deliver cars across Ontario. So we can be your local dealer. You can order from us and we can uh, help you out with everything across Ontario. All right, like I said, we're gonna start at the three minute mark. I am gonna jump into some context now and tell you that this is a vehicle that I'm interested in. Uh, I happened to drive a Chevrolet Colorado pickup truck because working in these dealerships, there was never an option for me that had a pickup truck. This is something I'm very seriously considering. Uh, so if you're looking for a non-biased review, my job here is always to tell you every single detail of the vehicle and allow you to make your decision. You will hear me say things that I like about this vehicle. I will also criticize some things about it. Um, I'm allowed to do that. I've been given the free reign to do that. Uh, so although there are some biases, including the fact that I probably am gonna buy this, maybe, we'll decide maybe by the end of this video, um, that's what's going on. So I will make some comparisons to my Chevrolet uh, pickup truck, and I will also, of course, fill you in on every single spec and detail. There's a lot that the other reviewers aren't saying, and I think sometimes they just don't know the context and uh, that's what we're gonna do so we're about seven eight seconds away here and uh, we'll do do me a favor guys if you're on hit the like button uh, that really helps us out and we will continue all right three minutes in here we go this is the 2022 Santa Cruz now to be fair it's a pre-production version but it basically is the exact I don't think it'll, anything will change at all I like this car. Now, is it a car, is it a truck? I don't think it matters what's going on. So let's talk about it. Is it a Tucson with a bed? It is not. Let me tell you why. This car came out as a concept car in like 2016 and they didn't build it. And the reason they didn't build it is because they didn't have a platform where they could do it right. So although a lot of auto reviewers just say, oh, it's built on the Tucson platform, you could very as easily say that the Tucson is built on the Santa Cruz platform because this uh, platform, was built from the ground up to be the Santa Cruz. So when I say it's not a Tucson, it's actually a hair wider than the Santa Fe. It's within an inch of length of the Palisade. Does that sound like a Tucson? It doesn't to me. So this car, again, I think sometimes people just say, oh, it's on the Tucson platform, it's a Tucson with a bed, it's an SUV with a bed, and it is, but I think there's some laziness or maybe the lack of understanding of what a platform is on a vehicle. So when I say this platform is shared by the Tucson, absolutely it is, but like I said, almost a little bit wider actually than the Santa Fe, an inch shorter than the Palisade. This is a good size vehicle, but it's not a massive, massive truck. Is it a truck? Well, let's talk about that. You got a lot of things in here, like it's a truck. Uh, it's got the bed in here. Uh, it's got good carrying capacity. I haven't got a sticker on the door because it's a pre-production model to show the actual carrying capacity, but I will tell you right now, my Chevrolet Colorado long box V6 crew cab is supposed to have a 1,498 pound um, carrying capacity. The window, the door sticker says 1,317. So 1,317 um, pound on my Colorado, I guarantee you this actual car will have more carrying capacity, more payload capacity than even my mid-sized truck. It's built well, it's built strong, and they show it. It tows 5,000 pounds. You can tow all kinds of weight in the bed. And then you've got a lot of cool truck stuff going on here. So let's talk, take a look at the truck stuff. These little corner steps, that's a Chevrolet only thing until now. And you've got Ford, which has the tailgate that flops down, and then you gotta pull the piece out and put the thing up. And that's all about getting you into the bed 
when the tailgate is down. You can see that's a soft closed tailgate. So these corner steps are absolutely brilliant. What you do is you put your foot in there, your hand up taller here, and you can step up and step up. And there I am, my feet are up here. And it makes it way more practical than Ford's system of pulling a step out of here, or even GM's new system of having the tailgate kind of fold down. It's still too high to step up on one step. So having that down means you can step up when the tailgate's closed. It makes it super simple. Tailgate closed, we'll show you a lot more in a second here. You also have this step, which instead of being level here, is lowered actually a little bit down. So when you're putting things on, uh, maybe you're adjusting something up here, or you need to climb up here, you can see me in the reflection there, climbing up to the bed, you can easily get up there. It's not such a high step, but every piece of it is the step. You've got trailer hitch and wiring. Uh, those of you that are like me, there's some questions we need to know. Uh, seven pin wiring is what you're gonna be required in Ontario to tow the, um, to tow the um, uh, trailers over 2,000 pounds, I believe. So anything with trailer brakes, you're gonna need seven pin wiring. I have asked to find out if the seven pin wiring is pre-wired, if it's set up. I haven't got that answer yet, but I will have it in a future video. So feel free to subscribe because I am looking into some of that stuff right now. You can see this one's wired up with a trailer hitch and uh, tow um, trailer hitch and uh, some four pin wiring, so that's fine. Uh, we're gonna turn lights on in a second. So let me just tell you where we're going so you know where we're gonna go in the next half hour. Gonna look at the bed stuff, you gotta start there. Then we're gonna go to the front uh, driver's seat. There's a lot of technology that a lot of reviewers don't really understand that we do with this channel. I work with it, I dig into it. So we're gonna show you some pretty cool features, stuff you haven't seen in other videos for sure. Rear seat space is a huge question mark for me. If I'm gonna buy this for myself, I wanna be able to sit behind myself. We're gonna show you that in this video. We're gonna talk about some lighting differences and some stuff about the lighting that other people aren't talking about as well. So a lot of stuff other people aren't talking about. We're gonna stick around for that full half hour. And if we go longer than that, we're just answering your questions or just filling out some details for you. All right, over here, tonneau covers. People say I should stand on it. The reason I'm not gonna stand on it is Although I can, it is very strong. It'll hold a snow load. Uh, rumors are it can hold like over 200 pounds. There's videos online of people walking across it. Uh, I have no question they can do that. Because this is a pre-production car, I don't wanna do that. So he says, are halogen lights standard in Canada? Yes, there's two trim levels with halogen lights. The one I have today is the top trim level. It has LED lights. I have the world's worst handwriting, but there's your pricing. The preferred trim, 38,499. The preferred trend, 41,399. Both of those, are gonna have 18 inch rims, these are 20s. They're gonna have 18 inch rims, so the di diameter of the tire will be the same, but the wheel itself will be a hair smaller. That's gonna give you more sidewall, that's good for off-road. Those of you wondering if you want this trim, but you wanna have a solution to that, I have a solution, we'll also talk about that in this video. So these 20 inches, perfectly fine. And then we go up to 41,399, there we go. 44,799 is the MSRP for the ultimate. So sorry for my terrible handwriting, but that's where we're going. All right, let's jump into the bed here. A lot of this stuff you guys may have seen here. Um, one thing I really like about the back, and maybe this is, you can see the Santa Cruz built into the back there. They didn't put the Hyundai logo on it. Now I have nothing against the Hyundai logo, but I just think it looks cooler because when you're sitting behind in a car, you don't know what this is. It's just a Santa Cruz and it looks like a pickup because that's the pickup bed. Uh, so it kind of makes you do a double take. And if you get a little closer, you can see it does say Hyundai, it's very clear, but I just think it's kind of cool that they, you know, they didn't choose their branding over everything else. They allow this truck to be what it is and it's a different thing. It's not gonna appeal to everyone. First glance, just really quickly, it looks way better in person and then it does in pictures. So you have to see it in person, I think. Um, if, you can, if you like it as is, you're gonna love it. There's a lot of people that have, were unsure about it that quite like it in person. So yeah, the dark chrome does look really nice. Somebody just commented that, absolutely. So you have a touchpad up here. You touch the touchpad and it is soft open. It's quite light to close. I'm not sure if it's aluminum or not, but it is quite light to close, lighter than my Chevrolet Colorado with a similar type function. Let's talk about how this top works. Now, full disclosure, this is a pre-production model. Normally there's a strap to close this. Uh, it's not on this vehicle, probably just a pre-production thing. Maybe they took it off for some reason. It didn't make it back on. Today, it's not here. It will be on every other vehicle, but we can still show you everything that's in here. Down here is the view of what you see. Again, normally would have a piece in here uh, that attached to a strap, but this is how you lock the upper tonneau cover. So you spin this like, oops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Spin it like that. And you can see it says locked. What it actually is, is it disables this handle. That just loosens up. So when you lock the trunk, lock it with a key fob, you cannot get in there. So you have lockable secured storage in here. Nobody can get into there that way. When you come back to it, you spin this around, and then there's a number of different things. You can stop it halfway, but right now I'm just gonna let it go the whole way. 
It does have a bit of a bang. It's gonna wake some people up if they're tenting next to you. You're gonna to wanna to do that slower with the strap if you're out camping. Once you have this, every model in Canada does come standard with that tonneau cover. In the States, uh, lower trim levels don't, higher trim levels do. And I should clarify, in Canada, only three models, they all have the same engine, they all have the same transmission. It's the upper level engine and transmission. Fuel economy is pretty good for what you get. 311 foot-pounds of torque, which is crazy. My mid-size Colorado has 269 foot-pounds of torque. So 311, so you got more torque. A little bit uh, 281 horsepower, so great horsepower as well. And that. Somebody says, is it based on the Santa Fe? No, uh, the, the platform this shares with is the Tucson, which in the Kia world, if you're looking to go, will be the new um, Sportage. But again, platforms are not cars. They are just, um, they share wiring harnesses. They have some initial structure that's built. This platform was built for this vehicle. So it's not the Tucson platform with a bed. It's the Santa Cruz platform that also is adapted to work on the Tucson. In here, you've got some really cool things. First of all, tie downs are really important. You've got a tie down there and up here, lots of ways to kind of connect things up, which I really like. You've got this movable tie down, and I don't think anybody's shown me in the videos I've seen on how to move them, but you just pull this inside. I'm pulling this out here. You pull it out and you can slide it sort of wherever you want. It clicks in place. You can hear it click in place. So you can put those tie downs wherever you want them. They're uh, really good, useful that way. You have one on each side there. You also have the tie down D-rings on the floor over there. So tie downs are important because you have to secure your load. And if you're gonna have that back, you're gonna have your load secured nice and tall and uh, you can put your tie downs in there. Over here, what you have are two, uh, one on either side, a little panel right there. You can take this box panel right out if you want. It is weather sealed here. I think that's important to say. Again, not weather fully weatherproof, I'm sure, but it has a weather seal on it. That is a storage compartment. What I would use that for is something like your tie downs. Um, maybe if you want some gloves in there, that kind of thing, uh, you can store it in there. Not huge, but very useful. On this side, you have the same thing, but different. So you come in over here, you've got your 110 volt plug, which you can see there is a plug that can be turned on from the inside and a regular plug. Now, the big thing I like is Toyota does this as well on their Tacoma, for instance, but it's inside on here, which means when this is up and you're loading stuff in the bed, you don't have to sit there and say, oh, make sure you don't hit the plug, make sure you don't hit the plug, because you don't want to knock that plug off on the Toyota, knock the cover off the plug. Here it's hidden, when you need it, it's there, it's super accessible. Now, here's the big thing that I think is super useful and why I think people are getting it wrong. You hit the open tab here, it's just a little push button tab. You can see the lights come on. Those lights can come on, you can set them up in different ways, but those lights shine down into your trunk. Now, how big is this trunk? Big enough for easily a couple backpacks, um, you know, probably three, four backpacks if you had to. Uh, what I like about this, and this is the problem I have with uh, my truck, when I load stuff up, or even if I go grocery shopping and I've got my kids with me, I have to put it either out in the open bed, and I don't have a tunnel cover for a reason, and I'll explain that later in the video, but I have to put it in the open bed or I have to put it with them. So let's say I've got stuff and I just wanna put my laptop, not with my kids who I don't trust because I raised them, I could put it in here. This is like a regular trunk in a car. It's as weatherproof as that would be. It's got all the weather sealing around here. Uh, so you can see that. So you have really good um, space there. Now, everybody says you can use this as a cooler and you can. You can use a little drain plug right there and uh, put it back on there if you want. So if you were gonna use it as a cooler, that's great. I think if for tailgating, throw some ice in there, put your drinks in there. I think people who are the sports adventure group that people are talking about, they're not gonna use this as a cooler. And the reason is, it's got no insulation. You're gonna use a regular cooler that lasts for days and days. If you're going out camping or something like that, what you're gonna use that for is the trunk storage type stuff that you would use in your car. Stuff that can go inside. What I really like about that drain plug though, is when you clean out a pickup truck, you kind of hose out this whole thing. You could just hose that out as well. And instead of sweeping all the dirt and sand out of your car or your SUV, you can just hose this out, rinse it, done, simple. You could power spray it down. And again, those lights shine up uh, into there. Now, the other thing that's pretty cool is when you flip it up over here, instead of doing the every other pickup truck sort of separates the brake light with uh, the two white lights on the side, this one has a full brake light across and the white LEDs, and they are white in person, they're looking a little yellow on my video, those shine down into the bed and you've got white LEDs in there. This thing was very smartly designed, including little things like pickup truck type stuff. See those little indents right there? It'll fit a two by six, cut it perfectly, and you've got a shelf, put a shelf above, um, and you can take stuff out, like uh, put the shelf above and you can have a two tiered system. If you put a four by eight sheet of drywall, or let's say um, plywood across the, above the wheel wells there, you can also unclip this, 
which is your uh, sort of support, and clip it from there to here. What that does is it holds the tailgate up like this at the same height exactly as those wheel wells, and you can put longer items out here. I don't think a lot of people are gonna be taking a lot of four by eight sheets in here, but the point is you can. So this is pretty cool. It's very well done so far. Normally, again, we'd have a strap to pull that closed. Just this particular one doesn't have it right now. All right, we're gonna take questions in a second here. Do me a favor, guys. We uh, don't have a lot of likes for the amount of viewers. Do me a favor, hit the like button if you like this. Uh, we'll continue to make more. The more likes we see, my bosses know that you'll wanna see more Santa Cruz videos and everything will go in detail in a shorter video in the future. Shorter videos, we'll make as many as you want. All right, so coming in here, let's talk about some of the outside things. 20 inch rims, I was concerned about the lack of sidewall, but because they're such big tires, they've got a pretty good sidewall. If you are like me, I would probably buy this trim level. And if you're like me, if you get the, um, if you want, if you're in Canada, excuse me, I'm struggling here, uh, you would get winter rims and tires on this. Now I think what I might do on here is on my truck, I didn't get winter rims and tires because it comes with all-terrain tires. That's what I would do here. Get 18 inch all-terrain tires as my winter tires because all-terrain tires can come with that snowflake logo that is approved as winter tire usage. So you switch to all-terrain tires. Now you have winter tires that are snowflake approved in the winter and you have a little more sidewall that you can swap them on on your camping trip so you can do what I like to do, which is head down old fire roads, head down old, um, you know, other type of roads, uh, other trail type things and set that. So when is it set to release? Any day now. You can pre-order now. It should be out very, very soon. So maybe for my winter tires, instead of throwing winter tires on, I'll just get, shrink it down, put all-terrain tires on, and then I can take all-terrains there. Will Canada get the 2.5 turbo engine? That's the only engine we're getting. What's the name of this color? It's called Hampton Gray, and it looks good. All right, here's what we'll do. I will get to your questions. I just want to give you a brief glimpse of the interior first, then we'll come to your questions, and then we'll jump inside. Now, the interior, is green. There's two color options, green or black. And I said for sure I was not gonna get the green. I changed my mind when I saw the green. It's not gonna show up great on camera and that's probably a good thing. It looks a little bit grayish in camera. Actually, it shows up more on camera than it does in person. It looks a little grayish in, in, on, in person, but you can kind of see it. Again, it's looking more green to my camera than it is to me in person. A Little bit of detail. And what it does is it kind of gives it a bit of a two-tone here. It's very, very subtle. And I'm gonna say, even if you haven't seen it, if you at all like a hint of green, kind of a gray green, order the green interior. Don't be afraid of it. It's not the forest green. It looks super, super sharp. Let's quickly go get the key because I forgot that because that's kind of my thing. Here's the key. That's what it looks like. Basically the same as every other Hyundai key, except instead of having a tailgate uh, to open, you have, or a trunk to open, you have a tailgate to open like that. What color is the trim, red or orange? Very good question. So let me just clarify. Anything you see on camera, these LED lights can kind of change things. Your screen, my camera, all kinds of things can kind of slightly tint the color. So always ask about colors. The gray looks better in person to me than it does on camera. Over here, this is an orange trim and it's pretty cool the way it's done. It's got a little like weaved kind of thing in there. Uh, it looks really sharp and I'm gonna be honest, I would get it in green. I didn't think I would like it. I love it in green. It looks really sharp. And it's got some cool little styling details. So you've seen this before, you've seen our videos, not this exact thing, but you've seen the interior because it's very similar to the Tucson, but just a little bit different. So I'm gonna turn the power to on. So again, we are indoors. This is how we do this in here. Uh, we are indoors, we can't run the engine, but we will look at things. You will see um, different things in the dash because like warning lights and that kind of thing because of that. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with this dash. This digital dash is excellent. One of the things I'm gonna point out is there's no hood over the dash. There's no cover over the dash. It works fine with just that display screen. And from a driver's perspective, it really gives you a full commanding view. You don't have this big bulge over on the driver's side. And it's just weird how it's, because it's different, it makes it feel like visibility is even better looking out. So really uh, cool design there. If I switch the terrain modes or the drive modes, we'll talk about terrain modes in a second that Americans don't have, you can switch between these dashes. Now, if you prefer one over the other, um, for instance, you like this one over another one, there's other uh, trims as well that show different, um, uh, different things. Maybe I'll show that a little bit later in the video. If you like the sport gauges, for instance, you can customize it to stay on sport gauges. And in fact, why don't we just quickly do that here? Uh, hold on one second, I gotta switch hands in, on my camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just do it like this. All right. Go over here, hit the home button there. Uh, let's go over to the setup. Oops. Let's go over to the vehicle. 
And this is a 10 and a quarter inch screen over here. It's very good. Uh, we're gonna go to cluster. We're gonna go to select the theme. And then we're gonna go to classic A. Whoops, let's not link it to a dry mode. So there's your classic. This is what you're gonna see most of the time in sport mode or normal mode. I should zoom in because it's got sort of like terrain lines in there. It looks pretty cool in person. There's a little bit of a flicker on camera. That's just the way the screen interacts with the camera. It's very hard to film a screen. Let's go to classic B. Whoops, that's classic A, classic B. That's your sport gauges. We just showed you them. They have a carbon fiber look to them over here, which is pretty cool. I like that. And again, it looks kind of real, the carbon fiber type look. And then you go down to Classic C, and there is kind of a different uh, gauge cluster that you don't always see. Now, there's one more that's not Classic. Scroll up a little bit here. There's Cube. What is Cube? It's weird. It looks very weird. It's a digital dash. It looks weird. And I think it's cool to have the option to do something weird and funky every now and then. So again, I'm going to link it to the drive modes again. We're going to switch through drive modes here right now. Normal, Smart, and Sport. Uh, to see that. And now, let's talk about drive modes for a quick second. We know this powertrain, we have driven it in Santa Fe, something like the Kia Sorento. Very powerful, very torquey, it drives excellent. The dual clutch transmission is very, very good. And what you have is um, quick shifting, all of that's good. The sport mode basically amps it up a little bit. It's gonna hold the revs a little bit longer. It's gonna um, be a little more immediate on the pedal. In this vehicle towing at 5,000 pounds, you know how a lot of cars have the tow haul mode? A lot of trucks have the tow haul mode? The sport mode is going to work very similarly. It's going to keep it in the revs a little bit more. And if you're going up a big hill and you want that power, leave it in sport mode. That'll give you back. Throw it back to normal or smart, smart uh, when you're going down the hill or whatever, whatever way. But that smart drive mode or that sport drive mode will work for towing. I promise you. All right, coming down here, you've got one button that the Americans don't have. Let's talk about it. Drive mode, you can kind of read. That's hard to read. The camera's having trouble focusing on the words. Now I switch to terrain mode. Terrain mode is really good because you have a snow mode, a mud mode, and a sand mode. So the Americans get kind of the old-fashioned, um, you know, locking system that only works below about 40 kilometers an hour. I'm not sure what that would be in miles per hour. So that's pretty cool. But you don't have um, the same level of control over every piece of the all-wheel drive system. So we'll talk all-wheel drive system when we hop out of here in a second, but um, the terrain mode really can customize things. You don't have to put it in sport mode here uh, or in snow mode here. If you want, um, if you hit snow, it'll be ready to go. We'll talk about how that works in a second. All right, lots more to show you here. Let's just quickly show you over here. Um, come back over here. You can change the, I wanna show you the lighting and uh, ambient lighting. So ambient lighting comes with a number of uh, different things. If we have the colors right here, we can link it to the drive mode. All of these colors are not showing as clearly on camera as they would be in real life. But remember how the outside doesn't come in bright colors? I promise you that's a bright yellow, that's a bright green, that's a bright red, purple, darker purple, uh, custom color, which you can do whatever you want. There are 64 colors in this color wheel here that again is not filming very well at all. Uh, but 64 colors, you can choose any color you want, including the custom colors. So we're going to leave it on the ocean blue for now. We can link it to the drive mode if we wanted to. Um, and then the other thing you can do is, I want to show you one final thing that a lot of people are surprised about. When you get in this car in the middle of the winter, what you can do is there's heated and ventilated features on your seats. Auto controls. What you're going to do here is when you get in the car in the winter, instead of having to get in the car, hit the start button, immediately come down here, hit the seat, heated seat button and the heated steering wheel button, and there's also ventilated. Instead of getting in the car and having to hit all three of those buttons, you're gonna set it up by checking these check boxes and it's gonna sense, hey, it's cold outside, I'm gonna turn on your steering wheel warmer and your seat heater. Hey, it's hot outside, I'm gonna turn on your seat ventilation for you. What that does is you get in the car, you hit the start, the climate system is an automatic climate system and you're gonna have the seats and steering wheel doing what it needs to do to keep you warm or cool. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's talk about the controversial thing so we can clear up some stuff. The big controversial thing is on this model with the 10 and a quarter inch screen, there are no knobs. Everybody says, oh, I need buttons and knobs. Okay, first thing is uh, I used to be a car reviewer and that's what I always used to say. Truth is you don't need them for as many things as you think because you don't touch them anymore. If you have the climate system here, um, you go to automatic, it will set it up. You have a dual zone system. Once you left it automatic and there, it's gonna do its thing. Would it be nice to have hot and cold adjustments? Yes, it would. Going to turn that down. We're going to diffuse the air. We'll talk about the diffuse system in one second in a, there as well. Uh, so would it be nice to have up down button? Sure it would. Not the end of the world. The volume button is the one thing people want. And here's why. They come to a drive through and they just want to crank that volume down. Well, here's what you're going to do instead. You're going to put your thumb on the wheel here to your steering wheel controls. It moves up and down. Let me just film it this way. Actually, it's a better way to film it. 
up and down is the volume there, up and down. If you press this in, so I'm pressing it in towards the steering wheel, that mutes it. Press it back up and it's down. So you can hold it down, hold it up to move it quickly. But if you get to a drive through, you just need to turn it off in a quick, quick second, you're going to hit that button and mute it. It basically solves the problem of what the only thing we really need the volume for. Everything else, you're adjusting up one or two on your steering wheel anyways. If you want to mute it, that's what you're going to do. All right. I know we're going over time. Lots to show you still. Um, let's just jump out and uh, take your questions right now. Do me a favor, guys. Hit that like button. Just pound away at it. Um, I was hoping to get to 100 likes on this video at least. So let's see if we can get to 100 likes. We've got some work to do. I'll show you the car. Uh, we got lots still to go here. Rear seat space was the biggest question mark I had. And I'm going to show you me jumping in there. And we're going to talk about some features back there that you may not know about. So uh, we'll let you look at the car. And I'm going to try to go through. Here's how it's going to work. It looks like there's a lot of comments in there. I'm going to hit as many as I can quickly. We'll come back to these in the end if I missed your question. So uh, da, 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 da. let me just flip around. There we go. There's the truck. Truck, car, I don't care what it is. Uh, what other exterior colors are available? It's best to check the website. They're all sort of earth tones. Um, there's like some that I really like. There's some that aren't my personal favorite, but it's very earth tony co um, color there. So it's just quicker to check the website than for me to list them all the names. Uh, somebody says it's kind of expensive. Okay, let's talk about the expensive side. Um, expensive what? Like compared to the Ford Maverick, some people say the Maverick is a different truck. Uh, the interior is nowhere near as nice as this. Uh, and again, we start with a ton of power. We start with um, a lot of capability, 5,000 pound towing capability. Um, and to be quite honest, way better styling. You may not like it in the video or the pictures. It is one of those things when you see it in person, like, oh, that's really nice. If you like it in the pictures, you're gonna like it anyways. If you don't like it in the pictures, I think you'll find it styled quite nicely. And the Maverick's not as compact. The Maverick is a longer vehicle. So again, this is within an inch of the Palisade. The Maverick's not as small as you think it might be. If you're looking for a compact pickup, this is gonna give you some options. So pricing, I think, is bang on when you look at the amount of um, equipment you're getting in an SUV. Go to the Honda store, go to the Toyota store, Go to a Kia Hyundai store and see what you get for that price range in an SUV. And now we're talking this. Somebody says, is it coming to the UK? I don't believe so. I think it's just North American for now. How many bottles of water can you put in the cooler with ice? No idea. I haven't checked. Uh, I was surprised by the 20-inch rims. I thought 19s would be the max. Yep, 20-inch rims. 18s are the rims on the lower trim level. And uh, the bed indents, you can place two by fours across. No, it's two by sixes across on those bed indents there. Um, all right, let me just flip back around here. If you have a question, start asking. If somebody says the dark chrome looks nice. It does. We'll talk about that. Um, okay, so, all right, let's keep going through here. Rear seat space. This is the big thing that I was concerned about. Now, let's just, before we get to rear seat space, I want to point out one other thing in the bed. If you're taking a bicycle, you always see all these things. They try to tell you the bicycles fit in here. The Americans don't have this tonneau cover. You can take it out. I believe it's like nine screws or bolts or something like that. It can come out. It's not something I'm going to want to do very often. If you put a bicycle in here, it'll fit. We had one in earlier. I'll show you pictures on my Instagram later. Um, I don't think you're going to put bikes in here. I think you're going to treat it like an SUV. You're going to put them on the hitch rack or you're going to put them on the roof rack or you have these little indents. Now, these indicate to me that these can be cut out and you'll be able to put crossbars across the front and the back. That's what I think they need to do because then you can reach your bicycles up to here and not have it uh, quite as high up as lifting it onto the roof. This is a big deal because you have strong roof rails right here and the ability to cut these out and raise them means if you have something like a kayak that you want a longer support, because these are pretty decent right here, but if you want to go even longer, you could put a pillar up there or even a pillar up there. You could probably make it out of two by twos, two by fours, something like that to drop in there and make it work. So you can really extend that roof rack out, make it wagon-like. What I'd love to see is uh, a roof rack come in from here to here and see a rooftop tent on the back. And then you've got lockable storage, rooftop tent, bikes on top, maybe a kayak on top. I'm gonna have pictures of this with my kayak on top. So those are those options. Now let's talk about the back seat. Opening the back door. Can I fit behind myself was my big question, my big concern. Let's find out. Seat is set for me where I would drive it. And headroom, fantastic. Legroom was what I was worried about. Here I am, six feet tall, and I've got quite a bit of space. I would say this is on par with my Chevrolet Colorado, but there's a couple differences here. Uh, I don't know how to film my feet. It's probably not going to be the best way to do it. What I will say is there is a lot of height underneath here, and that gives you the real ability to slide your whole foot underneath. Is this as roomy as the Hyundai Tucson that is, again, shares a platform with this? 
It is not. The Tucson has seats that are further back, which of course in this vehicle would rob bed space. I will say this works very, very well for a six footer behind a six footer. It was my big concern. I'm quite comfortable back here. I think it'd be comfortable for a long trip. Now there is one thing that I think is curious that I think they should have done. This here is sort of a hidden headrest. It rises up, but it gives the illusion that this is an armrest. It's not. I think this back padding is maybe a little thinner, which again, not the huge deal that we think it is because you're not putting a lot of weight on there the same as you would on the seat bottom. So I think they probably just didn't have a room to put a bigger, um, to put a bigger uh, padding in there. You've got a lot of support in the structure of the vehicle behind there. So you don't need the support of the seat, which would make it thicker. And that's my guess on why there's no, um, why there is no um, armrest in the middle. I don't think it's a concern. The concern for me is what about cup holders? And that's an easy answer. They are right over there. And of course you also have the um, pockets on both driver and passenger side, and you do have vents. Now this is only in the lux or the ultimate trim here that I'm in. I believe the lower trim levels, according to our preliminary specs, do not have these vents. Not the huge deal, you'll still get air back here. And there's two USB ports down low. Now, a couple of things, I'll show you a better view of the cup holder here in the light. So there's a cup holder and door, I'm fine with that. No lower uh, area down here, which again, a little bit of a curiosity, but again, you could put your bottles here. Uh, if you put your hot coffee there, just make sure you're taking it out before you open the door. Somebody said the floor mats are nice. Yeah, they do look nice. Here's one thing that's pretty cool. My Colorado does this wrong, Hyundai gets it right. My Colorado, I have to lift up here and then lift the seat. It's a two-handed job. This one, not so much. Lift this up like that. And my Colorado doesn't really stay up like that. I have to put the seat down. It doesn't really work because I have a plastic tray underneath that you need. This plastic tray here, can come out. It's like nine screws, the whole thing comes out. Then you've got not quite a flat floor, but if you have a dog with you, take that um, tray out and throw your dog back there and they're off of your leather uh, seats. They've got all kinds of room back there. And again, one hand to lower these back down. So that tray is designed to come out of there. On the far side is tools for the spare tire. You can throw those in the actual trunk if you need to, it's in a styrofoam bin. So well designed there for dogs, outdoorsy people. I think that's fantastic. All right, we are just over 30 minutes. Normally we cut it off here. I do wanna show you some lighting things because there's some differences here that I think play well. Um, let's just uh, turn it to the, let's go full on headlights. Okay, so you guys have all seen the grill out front. Uh, you're gonna have better videos of that. In my video here, they may flicker and that kind of thing. They look pretty dim right now and they look kind of yellow. They're white in person. My camera's filming it weird. It's just the way things work. These are brighter in the daylight when the headlights are off. Those are your headlights. So when you turn your headlights on, they dim down. In other words, these are be seen lights. I wanna be clear about that. Be seen lights is what they are in the daytime. And then they're just accent lights at night. You've got your LED headlights on this trim level here, which you can see are really sharp cut off and really bright. That is fantastic and the high beams are below. So you got headlights, high beams there and it's a little dual pattern there. And you can see a real sharp cutoff. Now, what's the biggest problem with trucks? They ride high, the headlights sit in other people's windows. These are down low and you might say, why doesn't it have fog lights? It doesn't need it. You've got some of the best lights in the industry, low enough in the vehicle that it shines right down the road. It won't be in anybody's eyes. And I'm gonna turn on the signals in a second, which are right here. They look pretty cool as well. So those lights there, bright white that you've seen, when you turn them off, of course, you see that mirrored grill. And Hyundai did a really cool thing here. They did a dark chrome logo there, which looks sharp. Cameras, I need to show you the cameras here. We're gonna do a separate video on just the cameras in a minute, in uh, within a day or so, and we'll come in there. But they did a good job in the lighting. Let's turn the, let's look at the rear lighting too. Every other pickup, I think, has lights that stack up and down. This one, they come across. Now they look a little bit like a, some people say like a Thor's hammer. Some people say like an arrow. Uh, they have a 3D kind of effect to them in person. It's hard to film here. One thing that's cool, let me see if I can get it in there. Designed in California. Can I get it without the LED lights in the way? Yeah, designed in California. It's pretty cool. It's designed and built in the States. So really kind of cool the way the lighting is in here. And I will say that looks sharp in person. It is an LED lighting that looks really good in person. Let's turn the signal lights on and you'll see the separate area here. Let's just turn the four ways on for a second here. All right, four way lights are on there. Turn them on and the arrows out front look pretty cool. They, uh, they're, again, they're really bright amber LED lights, so they look really sharp in person. And again, you have these ones, which really show up better in person as well. And then you can come back to the lights back here, and you have separate signals from 
everything else, which looks really sharp as well. Excellent job on the lighting here. Uh, clear, easy to see, and looks fantastic. Your backup lights are down there. These are just reflectors. Very, very well done. And again, brake light up there as well with the extra white light. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're gonna take your questions now. I have to return this vehicle, so I'm gonna have to at some point cut it off. Um, they need it back at Hyundai's head office, to be quite honest. It is not a production vehicle. Um, I'm gonna take your questions, and keep in mind, we will be filming this video again, or these vehicles, again and again and again. Many short videos, that kind of thing. Can you put the front seat all the way back and see the rear legroom? Uh, yeah, so that's misleading, right? If I put the seat all the way back, let me just explain what I'm saying. Oh, self-limiting suspension. If I put the seat all the way back, um, that's misleading because it's going to look like there's no room. The seat goes a long ways back and there's no room. I can do that in a second. Because I was just in there, I want to talk about something I haven't talked about yet. Self-leveling suspension. I took my son to an 1860s remake of Canada. It's Upper Canada Village. I highly recommend. Did that this past or a weekend or so ago. Excellent. You know what they had in the horse and buggies before cars in the 1860s? Leaf spring suspension. Do you know what they have on my pickup truck that's a brand new uh, current model? leaf spring suspension. It's silly that that hasn't moved along. What you have here is proper suspension from a regular vehicle, but it is self-leveling suspension. So what happens is when you put a lot of weight in the bed or you hook your trailer up, the car, truck, SUV, whatever you want to call it, is going to squat a little bit. When it squats, you're going to drive around the block and the oil will change in the um, shocks to level the vehicle out. Once it levels itself out, you retain your ride that you had before. It is fantastic in the uh, way it works. And the thing is, if you drive over gravel, washboard or something like that, or even just rough roads, and you're going around a corner in a car with leaf spring suspension and a, and a um, axle back there, the rear end's gonna skid out. This is my fingers on the rear end, it's gonna skid out. This one, because the wheels can move independently, because it has proper suspension that isn't designed and used in the 1860s, uh, you're gonna have proper uh, suspension all the way around. Let's quickly talk all-wheel drive system so we know about that as well. Most trucks with 4x4 cannot be run on dry pavement. My truck, my Colorado, has an upgrade package that allows it to be an all-wheel drive package so I can run it on dry pavement. This car, although it's front-wheel drive based, don't let people tell you what that means. When this car starts from zero kilometers an hour, all wheels are going to be turning equally. You can see it in a bar graph in the dash. It'll show you where the power transfer is. So you're always starting an all-wheel drive. Even if you've got a heavy weight in the back, it's not like you're gonna spin your front tires and then send power to the rear wheels and that kind of thing. It's always all-wheel drive. As it senses it doesn't need to power the rear wheels, it'll move that power forward, usually in about no more than 95 and five for sort of a shock absorption type uh, feel with the drive line. So you're always starting an all-wheel drive. If it still needs to keep it there, it's gonna keep it there as necessary. Uh, so you'll always have traction as best as possible. You're not gonna like load down the rear end, spin the front tires, then send the rear to that. It doesn't work like that. It's a really good system in snow. It's a really good system in low traction situations. It's excellent. All right, we have three more minutes. I'm gonna do my best to take your questions. If I miss them, we can ask them the thing below. And like I said, we'll have this vehicle back. So let's take your questions. We're trying to get to 100 likes. We got over 100 people on, 110 people on right now. Uh, do me a favor, let's see if we can get that likes. If everybody hits the like button, we'll get there. Is a factory hitch rated for a weight distributing hitch? Uh, good question. I believe so. I believe it would be because they recommend, they would recommend that I believe. Uh, so we'll double check that. Uh, but I, I would think it probably is, but don't take my word for it. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, six five and need all the room I can get. Yeah, if you're six five, you'll fit in here. We have six four people that will fit. You will not fit a six footer behind a six fiver. There's no way around that. Um, well, you know what? We're not going to do the seats in this video. We're going to have to make that in another video because I do have to get this back, and I was in the back seat, so you can kind of six foot to six foot. You can do some math by looking back at that. This is definitely my next Hyundai. Yeah, there we go. Don't forget to talk about the diffuse function. I should talk about the diffuse function. So the diffuse function. If you're ever in a car, there's two things this car does right uh, with their climate. Um, when we turn on the climate system right here, we turn it on, auto climate control, the fan can go as much as full speed. When I turn this down, the fan will cut back a little bit to keep it a little quieter in here. But sometimes if you're in the seat, this blows hard and that blows really hard and you just have too much wind blowing at you. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the diffuse switch. The diffuse switch 
takes these little tiny holes in there and turns them into vents as well. So you still move the same amount of air, but now you're diffusing it across the entire front of the vehicle. It's a super smart system. It just kind of spreads the air over and does exactly what it says, diffuse it. It's a great system. Combine that with the ability to, if you do use the vents, um, switch up to high or low, and it's a dual zone climate system, and you have heated and ventilated seats on both sides. Really smart system there. Let's turn that off again, turn the car off for a second. Uh, but really good system in the diffuse section there. Uh, makes a ton of sense. For me, the only negative is no buttons. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna lie to you. Some of the buttons I think I would like. Again, from an ownership experience though, most of the buttons in this car, even if they were buttons, you're never gonna touch them. You're gonna set it to auto climate control. Uh, the radio system works from your steering wheel. Almost nobody touches some of those buttons there. Uh, it works. That's gonna be a complaint. The only thing I will say is with the piano black, it's very, very easy to clean it, the clean screen and to clean that whole system without the buttons. It's pros and cons that they know that, they know that not everybody likes that, but that's what they're doing. What's the mileage rating for the Santa Cruz? I am expecting it to be 12.1 uh, in the city, 8.6 on the highway for liters per hundred kilometers. Ground clearance is 8.6 inches. That's more than any other Hyundai. And I will say it looks pretty good. And to be fair, I think my Colorado Z71 has just a smidgen less ground clearance. And the reason the trucks look like it has more is because this side here will have a little more ground clearance, but there'll be low hanging bits that actually give it less. This is fairly flat along the bottom. It's gonna be really useful for driving over snow, driving over other stuff, uh, having the ground clearance you need. All right, guys, uh, gonna quickly glance through the comments here. Looks uh, great, better than the Tucson, I think. Yeah, I think it looks better than the Tucson. Um, one thing the Tucson has a little bit more of is more an angular rear doors, where the only real angle in this car that matches the, or complements the Tucson is right out front there. Everything else is kind of smoothed out. Uh, it's gonna be something that appeals to different people and we'll go there. Floor mats are nice. Okay, here we go, guys. If you've seen enough, great. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you haven't seen enough, hit the subscribe button because this is a pre-production car that Hyundai Canada has granted us just for this video. And I promised her I'd be no longer than 45 minutes and we're at 42. Uh, I wanna thank them for giving us this car. And I promise you, we'll have more of this because I'm still deciding if I'm gonna buy one myself. So we're gonna compare it to a Colorado. We're gonna compare it to SUVs. We're gonna compare it to all kinds of things. We're gonna compare it to possibly other um, vehicles that you'd like us to compare it to. We're gonna go through a whole bunch of bits and pieces in short form so we can do just a video on just the self-leveling suspension. Um, so here's the things. Great all-wheel drive system. It does truck stuff better than some trucks. It's going to have more carrying capacity than my Chev Colorado. It's going to have 5,000 pounds towing capacity. The bed in here is perfectly sized for my needs. And here's the big thing that I like a bed for instead of a crossover. Um, when I go anything with my kids, I do a lot of kayaking, I do a lot of outdoor activities. There is sand and dirt all the time. We throw it into our truck bed, I hose it out when I get home and nobody cares. What happens without a bed is all that goes in the carpet and stays there. Having the trunk is a big deal because when I take my computers, my cameras, other stuff, even just grocery shopping, I have a place to put it where it's not with my kids if the bed's open and that kind of thing. Having this lockable tonneau cover from the factory is a big deal. You can get there, uh, you can put your um, stuff on top. Having the ability to probably put some cross rails across here, maybe a rooftop tent, something like that, very big deal. Having the roof rails up top on the car means when I take my kayak, and on my kayak, the only solid rails I can put on the truck are back on the bed. Otherwise I have to get those ones that grip the uh, doors. They're not as good. Uh, so my kayak can now be centered on the vehicle, which is what you want. Easier to tie it down into various places. So this thing does a lot of things well. It's not going to be for everybody and that's perfectly fine. But if you're looking for something that's fun to drive, that corners well, drives well, rides smooth, really quiet inside, what you'll find is the Santa Cruz fits that. And if you've never experienced a bed, if you're never in the market for a truck, but you now say, hey, that bed might be useful for gardening, camping, gear stuff, that's what you can do with this vehicle. This vehicle speaks to me exactly. We're gonna talk about it a lot more. I wanna thank everyone for watching. It's been awesome. We only got to 92 likes. Hey, I did my best for you guys. I gave you as much as I could. Uh, do me a favor, hit the like button. Let's see if we can get to 100 in the next six seconds here. Uh, what I wanna do is remind you, again, thanking uh, Hyundai Canada for providing us with this vehicle. If you're looking for this vehicle, Owen Sound Hyundai or Brantford Hyundai are gonna have it available for you. Do me a favor. As soon as this video is posted, I'm gonna put a link on how to reach out to me. Reach out to me. Tell me you wanna get in touch with them about this vehicle and we will be your local dealer anywhere in Ontario. Thanks everybody for watching. It's been a blast. I promise we'll have more. We'll talk to you soon and we'll see you